Okay, problem two. Let's see what I can uh, stop that. Okay, let's see if I can do problem two correctly. Uh, let's see. We've got this particle that starts at time t equals zero at position x equals zero. So that's right here. And it has a velocity of 2.5 ohm meters per second in the negative x direction. So the key thing about these plots is that the best way to handle them, when you have potential energy versus position, the best way to handle them is to look at total mechanical energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with it here when it has this much kinetical, uh, kinetical energy. Nice. Uh, so I'm going to start with this much kinetic energy. So I'm going to say that's at x equals zero. Okay, let's see if I can write a little better than that. No, come on, stop it. All right, x equals zero. Um, we have potential energy equals zero. And then its speed, we said, is 2.50 meters per second. And kinetic energy then at this point is going to be one half mv squared. And that is, uh, let's see, 2.50. Well, I'm going to do it uh, on a, another computer. So 1 half times m, which is 3 kilograms, times 2.5 squared is 9.375 joules. So uh, I'm going to say 9. Point, I'm just going to go to uh, 2 sig figs here because all I really want is for you to see how this problem works. So 9.4 joules. So the way we mark this is we start at our potential energy and we go up 9.4 joules, okay? So that gets us up 9.4. Now it happens that we're starting at zero here, right? And we're going up. So 9.4 joules of kinetic energy will also equal 9.4 joules of mechanical energy. But um, that's just a, a, you know, a fluke of you know, the problem setup. So kinetic energy there is equal to 9.4 joules, which means mechanical energy at this point is U plus K, so total kinetic plus total total potential, which is 9.4 joules. So now I can go here and get my blue pen and make a line like that and say this line here is our mechanical energy at this point. And then because mechanical energy is going to be conserved, we can in fact uh, draw a line horizontally across and say this is how much mechanical energy it's going to have. Uh, all the way through. So I'm going to draw my best impression of a horizontal line here. Eh, I've done worse. Okay, so this line here is, oh, okay, now I've got to stop doing lines. Okay, this line here is the EMEC line. Okay, so EMEC equals 9.4 joules. Okay, so now, let's see, you find the particle's maximum speed in the location where it achieves this speed. So in order to find the kinetic energy at any point, what we do is we take this EMAC line here and we go, let's say we want it right here, we go down and we measure how much the uh, potential energy is below mechanical and then we say this is our kinetic there because we take this equation here, right, EMAC equals U plus K and then we find kinetic equals EMAC minus U. So this is EMAC here and this is U so k is the difference between them. That's what we're saying here. Okay, so uh, find the particle's maximum speed for part, oh, actually for part A we want to find the turning points. So the turning points are the points where kinetic energy is zero. They're called turning points because you go up and your kinetic energy hits zero and then you turn around and go back. Okay, so this is our turning point and this is our turning point. And those are the points where kinetic energy is zero. Okay, so which are the points where the EMAC line intersects the curve. So kinetic energy equals zero, uh, and that tells us that our turning points are uh, at x equals, I don't know, I call that like negative 4.2 meters, negative 4.2 meters, and x equals positive 2 point, eh, I'll go with positive 2.7 meters. Okay, so that's for part A. Okay, part B, maximum speed. Uh, maximum speed is, well, maximum speed, I'm sorry, maximum speed is where you're also going to have maximum kinetic energy, okay? And so that's going to happen where you have the minimum potential energy or where you have the biggest gap between mechanical and potential. And that would be right about here. So about 3.1, 3.0, okay? So at x equals approximately 3. Point, I'm going to just go with 3.1 meters, okay? 
And so kinetic energy is going to equal, uh, let's see, kinetic energy is going to equal your Emac uh, minus U. So kinetic energy is going to be 9.4 joules minus, and then your potential energy there is negative 5, negative 5 joules. So kinetic energy is going to be at that point, uh, 9.4 minus negative 5 is going to be 14.4 joules. And that means then that if you, or oh, sorry, let me go uh, 1 half mv squared. And we know that our mass is this, right? So that lets us solve for v. Uh, and I'll let you do the details, but let me just see if I can do this on my separate computer, which has a different mouse and different keyboard. And I probably, sh I really want to get one of those TI um, emulators, but. Uh, I just keep, uh, you know, procrastinating on looking into that. So, doo -doo -doo -doo, five by three. Okay. So I think the answer is going to be square root of. No, stop. All right. Square root of twenty-eight point eight divided by three, which is come on. Okay. So what I'm getting is three point one zero. About three point well three point oh nine eight, but um, I'm going to call it uh, v equals three point one meters per second. You know, for this eyeballing stuff off a plot, it's generally harder, or it's pretty hard to claim more than like you know this many sig figs. Okay, so I'm not even going to bother with more than that. Okay, so uh, let's see. Maximum. So third one is maximum magnitude of the conservative force on the particle and the location where it occurs. Now this is a bit of a uh, question of how well you can eyeball. Um, the force, the, the conservative force on the particle is going to be equal to the negative of the slope of u versus x. Okay, and sorry this is horrible writing, but this is a u versus x plot because position is x and potential energy is u. So uh, the slope of this, basically to find the maximum magnitude, we want to find the place where the slope is steepest, whether it's positive or negative. Now over here we have some steep slopes here, but the, really the steepest slope is way the hell over here uh, around this part. So let me get a different color, ah, green, okay. And I'm going to try to draw in roughly where I think the steepest slope is, and then maybe try to draw a tangent line, although boy, oh boy, that's going to be tricky. Let's try that, and then if I start at that end and go like that, then I'll get about to there. That's sort of almost tangent. Okay. Um, I think you get the idea that you want a tangent line at this point, and this is not very well, you know, not a very great plot for taking tangent lines. So I'm going to call this roughly a tangent line at this point, and let's see, the tangent line goes, uh, let's see, to what's, what's the horizontal? is like 1.8 meters. So I'm going to do uh, F, well, all right, got to get back to the pen. Okay, so F max is approximately equal to, so the run I'm saying is, uh, no, it's not 1.8 meters. It's like one point, this is like a little bit in, right? So it's like uh, 1.5 meters. And the rise is negative 25 joules. So negative 25 joules divided by 1.5 meters um, is going to be about, oh, I don't know, negative 16 or negative 17, negative 17. And the units, of course, would be joules per meter or, um, although actually the maximum force is going to be the negative of, the ne of this slope, right? Because it's the negative slope. Doesn't matter because I was trying to find the maximum magnitude. Okay, so, but the maximum force is measured in joules per meter, which is newtons. Okay, so that's about right, and it occurs at I don't know. Let's say it's tangent right here, so negative three point eight meters. Okay, x equals negative three point eight meters. Okay, finally, um, part D: the additional kinetic energy the particle would need to escape the region shown in the plot. And which direction will it leave the region? So, what you want to do basically, you imagine adding more kinetic energy raises your mechanical energy. So, as we add mechanic, add kinetic energy, 
this line goes up and up and up, this blue line here, right? So we want this to go up to about the point where it is even with this, okay? So I'm gonna do my pretty horizontal line again and say when this gets even, or maybe even a little, yeah, when this gets even, that's the point where the particle can actually get over this hump here, right? Because before that, eh, come on, there we go. Before that, it, it can't reach the top of the hill. So when the EMAC gets up to the top of this hill, it can get over the hump. So I'm gonna say uh, it needs, you know, let's see, what do you think that is? About 14-ish joules, 13 a bit, I don't know. Uh, so let's just say, oh, come on. Emac for escape is about 14 joules. So you currently have 9.4 joules of mechanical energy, which means that the change in, mechan in uh, mechanical energy uh, would need to be, you need to get another 4.6 joules. Probably, to be fair, I should make that an approximately equal because this is hugely based on eyeballing. So what I want you to get out of this, this problem is the ability to see, uh, you know, how how these 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 changes in energy can be represented on this plot and how what you can do with a position versus potential energy diagram, or sorry, potential energy versus position diagram, because those will be important as we go forward. Uh, they, they occur again and again beyond this unit.